hands up or stand up if you like. Um, who of you thinks that developers are not good at graphic design? <laughs> yeah, we are, we, are, we are gonna be very stereotypical. In general, developers are not good at design. Have you heard that somewhere before? Mm, not the majority, interesting. Second question, um, have you said that statement yourself, maybe even about yourself, that you, you are not good at design? Yeah, a few careful hints there. Well, I'll go with the majority of when I had this uh, activity with some other people and say my first hypothesis is normally everybody's hands shot up and said, well, developers are not good at design. And yes, I've said so myself. Hypothesis number one, we need designers on the project. And they are talking specifically about graphic designers. Hypo um, now to the second activity. Um, who of you had a smartphone back in 2006? Just as a reminder, that was the year before the iPhone was released. <laughs> who of you had a mobile phone? Oh, sorry, not smartphone, but a kind of mobile phone in general in 2006. Okay, good majority of you. Who is still using that said phone today? <laughs> kind of nobody is putting their hand up. So hypothesis number two, we want the new and the contemporary. We are not sticking with the things that are ancient and old in the cases of technology. So what does that have to do with my topic of thinking about design? Well, I'd kind of like to tell you a little bit of the story of Mahara. Not what it is about, but really looking at some design aspects and how design really helped us also find ourselves and be seen by others. And kind of also want to encourage you to think about, while you're listening to me, think about the project that you're working on or the projects that you're working on and to look at it from a design perspective. So in the beginning, our project started in 2006, and specifically in September, so we'll have a 15th anniversary coming up just in a couple of months. And uh, we had an original design brief. Fortunately, a designer was hired just about two months after the project went live, had its first commit, and the design brief was make it web 2.0 shiny <laughs> and make it pop. If there are any designers amongst you, that's kind of your typical design brief that you get. You only hear modern, contemporary, and that's it. Nobody else can give you anything else. Okay, so our designer, Yvonne, delivered. And back then, remember it was 2006, so Web 2.0 was really in and fresh and the hype. So she made a logo for the Mahara project, that was Web 2.0, shiny, it had the mirror lake effect. And it popped, it had some green in there, had a funky font and looked really cool at the time. Um, I started using Mahara at the University of Luxembourg back in 2007 and it was really a cool logo back then. And having that kind of interesting font, not just your sans serif or your Times New Roman, was something different. So it definitely stood out. Now, that was 2006. Over the years, kind of Web 2.0 went away a little bit. We flattened everything because design aesthetics had changed, so we kind of got rid of the lake effect. We also got rid of some more shiny things in there. And that was kind of the logo that we used in 2012, 2013. But essentially still kept the same thing as we had before, just made minor adjustments. Now, during that time, of course, our software changed. We were first initially using it kind of with tertiary students, but also with primary and secondary students. But over the years, we also wanted to reach different groups of people to use the software. So within the software itself, we changed our icons. We kind of went more to a monochrome palette. 
we've removed a lot of the playfulness to cater more to adults as well. And so then in 2016, we thought, well, we need to do something with that logo. The original brief of Web 2.0 Shiny and Make It Pop does not really suit our project anymore because we have grown up over that course of 10 years. And so Yvonne came up with something totally different. That's our current logo. So we kept the name, we kept the overall idea of the, the logo, but we went to a different font to make it more current contemporary and to also express more who we are. Because we are not these funky, wavy things with the font that starts with King, um, but have more, in this case, um, Baloo as font. So the A could have been wobbly, but we flattened it out a bit so that it has a uh, standing on firm ground. And we also kept the roots to um, the, the Mari uh, roots of the word because ma Mahara means to think or thinking in Tereo Mari, which works really well also with the software because we are working on an e-portfolio where you're supposed to reflect and think back of what you had done. And so that was the first step in rethinking our design and that changed everything for us. Because we didn't just create a new logo or updated a logo, um, we, and that means Yvonne, created an entire brand for us now. Before we kind of knew, okay, we are using a particular font, but I had the green as color, so typically what I did kind of used the color picker and just swiveled around and <laughs> tried to find a color in there that kind of suited my needs, but we got very more professional, especially on my end then, because Yvonne created a whole brand for us. So now we have a logo. I know which font to use whenever I give a presentation like this. <laughs> I don't have to worry about which font looks cool on screen. Nope, I better stick to the brand because that is us. And we also have a whole range of colors because you can't work with green all the time at some point, especially when you look at accessibility or running out of green shades to distinguish. And so we now have green as the primary light color, but we also have yellow in there. We have purple in there. We have different shades of purple, different shades of green, so that we can do things like you see here on my laptop, namely have some more graphics in there, and it's not all green, but we have some variety. And the logo that Yvonne created is extremely versatile. So this is our primary logo, where we have the visual and also the text. But we can also let it stand on its own. And it looks slightly different. And we also have a mobile app. So we have a mobile app logo, which is based on the original logo. And when we have events, we just do things like that, where we just keep everything in in the same font. We tag words onto it. We have the, the location. And in some cases, Yvonne also makes up some um, characters for the events which tie in. And of course, this character is not from our logo. That is kind of from our previous logo, of course. And that is how we tie things back to our origins, so that we are not kind of taking the cuddliness away from from our characters. And so we do a whole lot of other stuff. <laughs> so we have user groups around the world. And of course, we are playing heavily with stereotypes, as you can see. Um, but that is what the community likes. And um, they can put those on maps. They can put those on t-shirts or on, on other collateral. They can make um, stickers out of it. But when you see one, you kind of know, and you see the others, you know they all belong to the same project. It's not like one day you have a completely different font than the other day and don't know, well, am I still talking to the same people? No, everything kind of flows together. And we do a lot of other stuff as well. Um, as part of the community, um, we release the software twice a year. And we also have contributors, from not just from Catalyst, but also from other organizations or sometimes even just people who want to contribute to the software in different capacities. And that is not just as developers, but graphic designers. They are open source contributors as well. Uh, support staff, um, BA, UX, 
security, system administrators, network administrators, um, everybody who in some way contributes to the project by making it a success. And that is not just through coding. And so what we do for those people that cannot be in Wellington, cannot come to the office and eat the cake, the celebratory cake that we have, they get a thank you card. And so what Yvonne does for each release, and last year we even had two different ones <laughs> because of the lockdown, um, she creates a thank you card where we can then put text in and personalize that for each contributor and makes that specific to the release. But again, you kind of see the connection because we always have our characters. And so she always thinks of something really fun that is related to the release, yet also keeps it in the brand, but also makes it so that people know, ah, yeah, this is from that project. And so why am I telling you all about that? Well, according to Pauline Brown, whom I heard on a podcast from the HBR IdeaCast, um, 80 to 90 percent of the decisions that we make, buying decisions, are driven by how something feels and not what a customer thinks about it. And um, Maya Angelou also said once, I may not remember what you have said, but I remember how I have felt when you said it. Just paraphrase. And so that means what we feel and design makes us feel. When we look at a website and we think, oh my gosh, this is 1990, it's already almost a drag to actually use that software or use that website because it just doesn't look so good. But consciously, you might not really think that, but unconsciously, it is there. Whereas if you like the design of a website, instantly, you're more likely to use it. You're happier to use it. It feels easier, even though it might just be exactly the same functionality. And some people also say that um, you can hide mistakes by having good design, or you're more forgiven by having good design, even if there's a mistake in there. And so that is really important and why I want us to think about design and not discount design and say, oh yeah, those designers. Um, they come at the end and they do something, make it pretty, but yeah, actually it's the coding that is important. No, design is incredibly important for people to actually use the software and the websites that we create. And um, in order to make them look good for people to be wanting to use them. And it's not just the websites, but it is also everything around. So the letterhead, any branding documents that you send out, any flyers that you create. And also, for example, the big sticker that I have on my laptop, as you can see here on screen. This is actually our entire community. We have translators. They are the super translators up in the corner. We have people who are doing code for you, and documentation writers, those that look after the security, in our case, of course, cybersecurity, information security. Um, ninjas, they are our general developers and um, People, no, sorry, people who report back. Then we've got teachers and students, because if we don't have anybody using the software, why would we create it in the first place? So they are incredibly important, even though they are not really oftentimes contributing to it. Support staff, people organizing events, like Doris, because we want to talk about the software and also let people know what they can do with it. Um, partners, testers, system administrators getting tangled up in all the heels <laughs> and having the black hoodies on. Um, Backend developers, they're going underground. Designers, front-end developers, BA UX, and then also some automated processes. So all of these people are part of the project. Not one of those roles is more important than another because every role serves a purpose. And so we want to see our community as all of these roles and not just highlighting one particular one. So what can you take away from this today? Well, number one, define who you are. How do you want to be perceived with your software? Do you want to be perceived as this playful, fun um, software that caters to really, really young students? Or do you want to be seen as a software that kind of caters to more adult audience? 
or maybe even a retired people because that aesthetic is completely different. Secondly, then design your project. Do not make it an afterthought. Start at the beginning. Involve the designers. Bring them in from the start because they also need to have a word so that you put enough classes in there so that they can actually design certain things. Because if you only say, okay, here I have one button and you give one button, color, uh, one button class, but you don't allow for two button classes, then every single button looks the same. Whereas sometimes you might want to highlight the primary action with one button color and make all the other ones more subordinate to it. And so the designers need to have that input and you need to hear them for that so that they actually can make things look pretty and good and functional. Thirdly, aesthetics change. Design taste changes over the years, as you have seen on our logo, just by looking at that fun logo. So don't be afraid to change it over time if you feel like that's not you anymore. Um, make that hard decision to change a logo. We've seen that with big brands, like Google has made quite massive changes over the years. Uh, Burger King rebranded, Safari rebranded just recently. And how we perceive those brands these days definitely influences how we look at them as a company. And fourthly, but not lastly, thank a designer. Please do, because every project has their own unicorn. And those are our designers. Thank you.